Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media, uh, but if you're watching that, you probably already know that. Um, I am here today with the director of the short film, the, uh, not The Lost Kings, just Lost Kings. Um, and that film is, that short film is playing at Chicago International Children's Film Festival on Friday, November 5th, virtually um, for, I believe, 12 bucks. Um, so I don't think you even need a pass for that. So, Brian, hello. How are you? Great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, so really quick, for those who don't know about this short film, how would you describe um, Lost Kings in your own words? So I describe Lost Kings this way. I would say it's a story about a boy looking for food for him and his younger brother. And in the search, he ends up breaking into a neighborhood home uh, looking for, for groceries. And, and then once inside, uh, the homeowners actually come back to their house and he becomes trapped inside. Uh, they don't realize he's there. So it becomes a cat and mouse game of him trying to get out of the house before they, they realize the, they re that he's still in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, they do realize someone did break in, but they don't know the person's still there. So it's a suspenseful uh, coming of age drama that, um, yeah, we're really proud of how it came together. Yeah, and you know, it's premier well, I wouldn't say premiering at a festival, um, but another reason to be proud of it is um, you you just submitted for Oscars consideration uh, or qualified for Oscars consideration. So I guess a big question is how does that feel to be considered for one one might uh, be considered one of the most prestigious awards. Oh man, it's a dream come true. I mean, I, um, I, I set that as a goal, you know, years back is something I wanted to do, not just for the accolade that it, like I, I had to have that, but more so that I knew that would be a mark of um, creating something that was really connecting with people. And I thought that would be a, a really great goal to work towards. And so here I am several films later, um, having that happen is pretty incredible. It still feels a little bit surreal, um, but also, yeah, it, pretty, pretty exciting. I, um, I can't wait to see what happens in the next couple of months with, as the race kind of narrows down. And it kind of becomes part of your name too, because any yeah. future work you do, um, it becomes from the, uh, uh, director of Oscar name nominated short film or Oscar qualified. I don't know the language there, but, um, yeah. but even still that that's an addendum that you can add on to future trailers and be like, hey, look, I, I, I qualified for the gold man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, and, and not only just, obviously that's a huge honor for me and, and hopefully opens more doors to like make other films, but also like the team behind our film was just incredible from our DP to our cast to all the different crew members. Um, I could brag on all of them for a long, long time. So. I'm also just really proud that everyone involved, the whole team kind of gets recognized for what an incredible contribution they brought to the film. Yeah, and let's kind of do that for, for a moment. Let's kind of brag uh, on sure. it. Uh, because um, as sometimes happens with these um, interviews, um, the art of filmmaking kind of gets lost. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess what is your favorite story from the set that kind of just was like a really nice moment for you or the production team? Oh, okay. Nice moment. There's been, a, there's a lot. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty focused crew. So for the, the three days we were on set, everyone was um, very hardworking and pretty focused. So I think um, the sweeter moments came towards the end as we kind of saw that we had made it through. There were certainly really great moments along the way where, um, was like a really, you know, a deep breath. Whew, we got that big scene done. And, and some of the larger scenes, I think actually we placed all the larger, most um, pivotal scenes earlier on in the production block, kind of got those done uh, on the front end. So by the time we get to day three, um, a lot of the content we were getting was important for the story, but um, it was basically, we were shooting the, the first uh, quarter of the film on the third day, the last day. So we kind of knew we got a lot of the big moments done. So I remember um, sitting on set, uh, I, it, it was probably like one of the final shots we did. And um, I like wanted to say something meaningful to the crew to thank them. But I felt, I felt 
and I don't think I've ever said this to any of them or they know this, but I felt so overwhelmed with emotion that all these people had had believed in the film and came together from all across the country, even out of the country a little bit um, to, to come like, tell this story and sitting there on the third day, you know, probably 30 minutes from, you know, wrapping the whole film, I felt just overwhelmed with, you know, relief, uh, just immense gratefulness. And then also almost just, yeah, almost moved to tears just by the fact that, wow, we did it and everyone did it together and um, everyone was so great. And uh, I think we made something special. And then to go back and edit it now, I know for certain we made something special, but even on set that third day, I kind of felt that. and. Um, it was a really sweet moment. I felt maybe more emotionally overwhelmed in a good way, like um, than I've ever felt on a set, just because of the sheer gratitude I had that that we kind of made it that far. Yeah, and that's always a good energy to have on a set, is where everyone's just kind of having this almost symbiotic relationship with one another, like just this fun experience, to put mm -hmm. it lightly, um, but. You know, you talk about the story, um, and that kind of brings me to one of my questions. It, it, this is a story about wealth, wealth inequality, and that's kind mm -hmm. of become something that's kind of being discussed, um, not only in films, but in the real world, as especially mm -hmm. in the last year. Um, and um, I guess, what, what did you want to add to that conversation in the short film? It's a great question. Um, you know, I, I've been asked this before and I always like to be clear that I think there's people way smarter than me who could, who could talk on this, this issue um, in a lot of really profound ways. And so for me, um, as a filmmaker, I think more than anything is I was hoping to humanize and bring a face to what's commonly a faceless issue, or it can be very stale, right? Like even the term wealth inequality, sometimes people bring a lot of emotional yeah. weight to that and sometimes it's just a um maybe a little bit of a, a black and not black and white but um an issue on a page and so yeah. for me it was of immense importance to bring uh a context a face um some heart to the situations behind you know that issue to help people maybe understand really uh some of the human elements of it that maybe get just not quietly quite quite explained well enough commonly when people are talking about it. So um, bringing nuance to the to the situation, bringing empathy to the situation, and hopefully connecting people's hearts with, with the humanity behind some of these things going on in the country. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you talk about it being an issue on a page, and it literally is that right now. Um, mm -hmm. Like with one of the bills coming up, I. Mm -hmm. I, I don't delve too deep into politics, but it's just like, hey, why don't you just sign that piece of paper? Um, <laughs> because I think there's some bill. I, I, you can tell I probably don't read a lot of news, um, especially since most of my day is this. Um, mm -hmm. And letting that in is kind of a dark thing to do um, because it, a anyhow, I, I think it's a very interesting topic to have, and I think short films are the best equipped to do th these things because mm -hmm. in a, let's say, two hour, 45 minute movie, just to you know, shoot off an example, you have to, you're not focusing on one singular idea, you're focusing on maybe 13 small ideas mm -hmm. that have to evolve over the course of the story. Um, Whereas a short film is just, it's this one one topic right here. And that's mm -hmm. for 13 minutes or 45 minutes. That's how long we're going to play with this. Um, yeah. Like with Cram, um, a film I saw at the Austin Film Festival. Well, I saw it before the Austin Film Festival. But mm. um, that's a 45-minute short film or feature film, whichever you want to call it. Um, and it just plays with one idea and one idea only. Um, so I, I, I think that's an interesting uh, thing where short films are uniquely equipped for that. Um, mm -hmm. But talking about that one idea, did something spark that off, did, uh, an event or anything like that? 
Well, to be it's it's ironic that this is going to be my answer after talking about the value of short films because I really agree how focused they can be brings a tremendous strength. But it actually was sparked by a feature idea that I wrote first, um, a longer idea which which like you said does kind of delve into different nooks and crannies of that same topic and explores a multiple uh, or a multitude of themes um, all surrounding a wealth inequality and some and. But yeah, it goes even beyond that, like you said, because features can do that. Um, so the, I wrote the feature idea, something I still am um, kind of working towards making now, especially as the short film has gotten some attention and, and there's some momentum behind it. But I wanted to, I, I'd previously made short films that I was really proud of, but I would get to a point when it was done and people would want to know what was next. And maybe it was a, a new short for me, but I started to recognize, well, if I make a short, you know, I put all the energy to make a short that I think is really, really captivating and powerful uh, and people are interested to learn more about that like they have been before I should have something ready um, and, and I've written feature films before but I'd never written a feature film specifically and then specifically adapted it so I wrote the feature script I adapted it to a short version and um, that coupled with just like life experiences um, you know wealth inequality is around all of, is around all of us I think if your eyes are open, and you're, you're moving through whatever city or community you're in, you'll see um, that gap and you'll see your specific role in that gap. I think a lot of us fall somewhere on the spectrum and um, there's ways that you, you, you might not interact with it in your day. And then there's other ways you're participating in a larger system that d does cause this gap to grow wider. Um, it's a immensely complicated situation, but to bring it back to your question, um, my own experience interacting with you know, people, like I said, not just the issue, but, but people in a multitude of different financial situations, um, friends and family, and in my own life, different, different experiences of um, financial struggle or seeing where resources um, were not as uh, available to, to me or other people as they are to others. Um, I think I've been on both sides of the coin. So um, that coupled, it was the initial spark and then coupled with the feature idea really sparked the idea to do the short to hopefully work my way back up um, to, to this larger idea and make this larger film that allows this, this longer story to be even more on the hearts of the people watching it and even go even farther with some of the themes that the short talks about. And you know, it was funny, I was gonna ask about the, the film because mm -hmm. um, it is directly uh, evolved off of the short or actually you said it, it's actually vice versa uh, mm -hmm. in this case um, where intentionally uh, so yeah where I think that's interesting because the presumption is you do the short and then you do the film mm -hmm. um, and I was talking with somebody uh, um, about this um, idea um, I forget who it was um, I let's see I think it was the people maybe Grand Bolero or Spaghetti Junction, um, um, where I was talking about this idea um, that my English teacher uh, introduced me to. Um, because you talk about um, how does the story continue? And then there's also the antithesis of that argument of, well, it's a short film, it should just be allowed to exist on its own. Um, mm -hmm. But because there's this idea in literacy, um, or however you want to say it, um, that at least this is what my English teacher said, is that stories are like passing by somebody's front window and looking in. Mm -hmm. um, you just great metaphor. You just catch a snapshot of that moment, and that's all you get. You don't get to see them coming home from work, closing the door, taking their coat off, mm -hmm. and making dinner. It's just you see them eating dinner mm -hmm. um, because you're just passing by. You, you don't get the full picture. Um, and even in, I guess, feature films, that would be um, kind of the same way, especially with um, a lot of films opening in media res. Yeah, um, I completely agree with that. Um, so I think that's an interesting dichotomy to start from, uh, from short to uh, sorry, no, feature to short, and I guess, mm -hmm. I guess my question is, I guess why do, 
why develop the film and then do the short? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, to be fair, I, I think it would be a strange situation, although maybe someone could do a really great job at it to make the feature and then make a short. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was a little more practical because the obviously me writing the feature script just costs me time and energy. Um, but, but writing on the page is, is a pretty inexpensive form of storytelling. Sure. Um, but then naturally screenplay is not the final place that story has to live. So in creating the blueprint from the larger one, it made sense to say, well, what can I do? And, and what I could do is make the short for a myriad of reasons. Um, I get to play around and explore with the material on a smaller scale and kind of learn things about my material. And I will say that very true. I've, I think uncovered themes and messages in my short that, that were already in my feature, but maybe they weren't fully realized or I needed to lean into them more. So for more or less like a practice round or an early experience of the story. So then when it comes time to do the longer one, I've already lived in it for a little bit and have an idea of like where I can be more fully realized. Yeah. Um, second, it's actually just like money wise um, and time wise, it, it's, it's an easier um, thing to pull off independently. So for me, it's just, you know, saving over multiple years, um, dreaming of this movie just to be able to do it um, is kind of the best I can do right now to do the short, um, to kind of find those partners who wanna come in and support a longer story that's just gonna be more expensive in, in both time and, and money and uh, crew. So that's, that's kind of like the strategy, right? It's actually very practical yeah. um, for making the best feature film. It's like, well, let's practice, let's make a shorter version. Let's find some partners who want to help do the longer version in, in a bigger way than I can right now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my answer. It's actually pretty strategic. Yeah, and it, and it's kind of, I feel, similar to how I feel when writing a review and then seeing how people react to said review. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm probably, I probably bring this up way too much in interviews this past week, but I wrote a review for a film called The Cleaner. Um, mm -hmm. It's a film by uh, Aaron, El directed by Aaron Elders. Um, it's about this guy who is a home cleaner mm. who um, is tasked by Di uh, not Diane Lane. Um, oh shoot, um, the the original Wonder Woman. I forget her name. Um, oh okay. Um, I. I I'm totally blanking right now, um, but that character. I'm too, but I know, I know, yeah, I know who she is. Um, and tasked with finding her son, and it's like, oh, I thought, okay, this is a bad, bad movie, and, and um, I, I went out of my way to emphasize what I thought was good about it and what could have been improved on it, and then I, I, I expected nothing from that review. I expected maybe two views, maybe 20 um, at most. And it's been my most viewed review of the year. Oh, wow. Even over um, my reviews of episodes, I believe, two and three of Naomi Osaka, the documentary hmm. series by uh, Garrett Bradley. Um, so I, I, I find it interesting, at the very least, um, to talk about expand, expounding on that idea of mm -hmm. the short kind of i guess in a way exploding the idea um, yeah you could almost think of it as like a pilot right yeah. for a television show it's kind of like the short is exists as my pilot for my feature yeah and pilots are one of the most interesting things i think mm -hmm. um because you get to see a lot of creative influences and ideas that um especially with like the old cw shows Mm -hmm. would not get translated like even in the flash pilot from cw there's a lot of stuff there that does not exist now um sure. like barry allen's looking at the tread patterns and i'm like this doesn't exist in the rest of the show <laughs> he's just yeah. the flash but um yeah a lot of like testing to see kind of what direction is going to make the most sense yeah yeah and i guess um how did you play with that expounding on the idea how, how did you just kind of and maybe you've already answered this but I, I i just find it interesting to delve deep into the 
intricacies of uh, f filmmaking, especially script writing, because we only mm -hmm. see that after the fact. Sure. Um, so kind of so, curious, like how, like how did I go about figuring out what would be a compelling short from a larger idea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, some of it might have been intuition. I think I knew uh, on a practical level, um, the longer you go into my feature, uh, you've been given more context to the characters. So there's less, um, yeah, less set up in context around their situation. So I was pretty aware I probably would need to pull source material from the feature from earlier on in the film. Okay. Because uh, it already had some of the DNA of like helping guide the audience into who is this, what's going on, what's the situation. So that was an initial start. The next question for me was like, what does it look like to make a standalone short? Um, because like you said, like it's, it, it, it is a short, it's not supposed to be this open-ended um, thing. Like it, it was important for me to be a satisfying, you know, full arc of a character story for my, for my audience. Um, I think I feel sometimes a little bit cheated if I watch a short and it doesn't give me that because I do intend to watch it as a singular unit. So it was a matter of saying, what's the heart of this story? And, I, and, that, and what's the, the kind of singular struggle and need for, for one of my characters? And what does it mean to show a satisfying shorter glimpse of that character experiencing that need, that dramatic need? and kind of coming to a, a, a character change in and of themselves. So naturally it's not a completely like pull a chunk out of the feature and do it. It's a little bit of an adaptation of the world and, and trying to explore the same character arc in a smaller micro way. Yeah. Um, but then, because obviously there's there's characters that many characters are just completely removed that exist in the feature, but in this this short setting, just it doesn't make sense to include them. Yeah, but it's also been encouraging when people ask about it. They're like, well, what about this character? What, they want to know more about the what's beyond the world, the walls of the short. Yeah. And often they're asking about characters I already have. So it's also been kind of encouraging because I'm like, well, that's great. I'm glad you fill that gap because I have that person kind of rounded out in the character later. Um, but yeah, it was more I, knowing that the feature will be its own thing later. It was more saying, okay, I've got to like to a degree putting the writer and director hat on and off, kind of switching between yeah. the two. I need to say, I'm gonna have to kill some darlings in the sense that like, there's great things I love about the longer story that just don't make sense in the shorter context. And I'm gonna have to say that that's just a hard decision I'm gonna have to make now. Um, but I will say like the, the filmmakers that are willing to do that and the fact that I was willing to do that is what led me to a more compelling short because I was willing to let go of some of the, the context that a lot of people wanna squeeze in um, and like simplify the short. I think that can be a common mistake people make is if they overcomplicate, you know, yeah. a short film. Yeah, I mean, there can be a myriad of things, especially um, like where you do too many introductions and then it's like the viewer's questions become, okay, who is that guy again? Why was he relevant to the overall narrative arc of the film? of the short film. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, for those who don't get to do a feature film off of that short film, it's like, okay, uh, there, there's no second chance on that thing. So you kind of spoiled the, the, the viewer, not you, but mm -hmm. you know, um, the one who makes too many introductions. And sure. you, it, it becomes this weird, thing. It, it, it becomes this thing that you don't get a second chance at sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of like you, um, you, can, uh, you know, I think there's a lesson in there for life in general that like if you focus too far beyond where you're at, you can actually trip in, your, yeah. you know, where you currently are standing. I think that was kind of an important act of discipline that had to happen was like, okay, yeah, I have to be disciplined now in making the short film in a way that could set me up well um, later. Otherwise, I, I, if it's if I get too obsessed with the vision later and don't just stick the landing now, I won't get the later opportunity. So that was definitely on my mind as well. Yeah, and it, it's funny. I heard you say "kill your darlings" uh, or "kill the darlings," and it's actually a phrase I heard before. I don't know where I've heard it. 
I think it was a, a YouTube video. Of a, I, I think of, I acquired it from a writing screenwriting book or somewhere. It must yeah. be language passed around. For, I, it's definitely in the in the toolbox of writers. I think to always say that someone said it somewhere to me about it too. Because these are the corridor guys talking about like these big grand VFX shots they wanted to do and just didn't have time to do, or it was something about editing. I think I was watching something about editing specifically. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, I think that's just a fascinating idea because you talk about the writer director hat. It, it is that kind of thing where as a director, you're kind of like, okay, I need to do what's best for these characters and these, um, this world that I've created as, uh, and that this writer has created, but then you're also the writer, so it's like, okay, here's my here's the thing I worked so hard on, mm -hmm. and now I've got to cut like two pages out because yeah. this just doesn't work, um, and that's just a, I, I guess, fascinating dichotomy, um, mm -hmm. because I do, and. It is it's interesting, I think, because mm -hmm. I do talk to some writer directors, and I've never even thought to think about about how many conflicts that causes um, in the editing process or the directing process. Because it's like I think I even talked to a writer director editor the past week, and it's like I think I think it was cram the one I was talking to that was writer, editor, director for Same as me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it's this interesting art of filmmaking where um you have to just make the decision um to kill your darlings as you say. But um wait um oh there you are. Um you went out for a little second. Um, or just but, my internet, yeah. Yeah, Zoom's very interesting with internet. So um, beyond that, I, I don't think I'll keep you uh, much longer, um, but I do want to say those interested in the short film, Lost mm -hmm. King, uh, again, you can um, watch this virtually at the Chicago International Children's Film Festival on Friday, November 5th for $12. I mean, that's about the price of two movie rentals. Um, I And that's about standard price for Inventive. And that'll um, be a block of shorts, too. It oh, won't yeah, just yeah, be, yeah. You, so you'll, in addition to Lost Kings, you'll get to watch a couple other shorts in the block. Yeah, uh, apologies. It, it's just the way it showed up in my Inventive. So. Oh, yeah, you're fine. I, I thought I'd let people know just so they know that you'll probably get a bigger bang for your buck, too. Yeah, probably like, what, four or five shorts or something like that. So I think so. And yeah. still... So, um, so yeah, Brian, it was great talking to you. Um, it, it's always nice to just talk um, and not just type um, because mm -hmm. I do feel like that. And people who have watched my other interviews are probably getting sick of this phrase, but I do think the art of filmmaking gets lost when you're just typing out a review. Mm -hmm. um, it... Um, detaches the art of filmmaking from itself almost mm -hmm. um, because you have to think very logically and critically about, okay, I didn't like this, I like this, and it's just very analytical. Um, but with this, mm -hmm. it's just a conversation, um, which I'm very, very grateful and privileged for um, having the opportunity for um, because not a lot of people get this opportunity. Um, yeah. and especially smaller creators, however you want to look, put that label on the mm -hmm. cookie jar. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for joining me, Brian. Yeah, it was, it was great. It's always a blast to talk to someone who's watched the film and enjoyed the film. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other filmmakers, I think out there on their own journey, making their own things. And, and I benefited from listening and learning from a lot of other people on their own journey uh, of what it, what it's meant for them to make, you know, tell their stories, make their films. And so I'm happy to be able to talk with you and hopefully somewhere along the way, it helps someone else yeah. figure out their next step or whatever their next movie is going to be and happy to 
you know, pass it along and help other people kind of move forward.